This is a approximately a golf ball size piece of clay. That's about an ounce of clay. Okay, and you are gonna use your hands, not the table, to pat and pound clay. Okay, so there will be nobody putting it on the table and pounding it down to make it flat. If you do that, what will happen? Stick. It's gonna be stuck, okay? So as I'm kind of rounding this out, I'm seeing that this is a little bit bigger than a golf ball, and that's gonna be okay. And you can use the table if you want, but you have to be willing to wash the table, which is not a big deal for most people. Some people like to walk away and leave it, all right? So sometimes when it's out around, it's better to tap it like this and knock it into round. Sometimes when I roll it, it looks like an alien spaceship and it gets pointed on the top. I don't know why, okay? So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna pound it here. Come join us. So the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to thin this out to a flat piece for my base and I want it to be a little bit more than a half inch just for stability not a half inch, a quarter inch. So about a quarter of an inch is what we would normally want the walls to be. That's what you see here. That's approximately a quarter of an inch thick, isn't it? But for the base, we're gonna make this a little bit sturdier, okay? So I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna pat it and pound it in my hands. Did we see Maria do this in the video? Yeah. Yes. Is that thin enough yet? Nope. No. It's a little bit too thick, so let's go a little bit thinner. And if you will just, I'm really using this part of my hand for the smashing of it so that you know where you're thinning it, so i got to keep turning it. So I want it somewhere just a little bit thicker. Okay, so that's going to be about the right thickness. So that's just a little bit thicker than a quarter of an inch. Do y'all agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. So for this, I brought a handy dandy cookie cutter. Okay. This is approximately a two inch cookie cutter. That way we all start and we create a, a pot kind of on equal playing field. Be careful and look. Sometimes the center is like a hamburger patty. It stays thicker and you've got to fill with your fingers where the thick and thin parts are. Like we saw Maria do in that video. Okay. So then I'm gonna cut that out. And this outer piece that I have, I'm gonna actually use as a coil. And sometimes when you cut it, you can see that it's thicker than you think it was gonna be. So I'm gonna say, I'm even gonna thin this down one more time. And get it just a little bit thinner. A pot should mimic its size and in weight. So if your pot is big, it might be heavier, obviously. And if it is small, it can be thinner. So I'm somewhere just a little bit thicker than that, aren't I? Okay, and that's what I want. So the next thing we're gonna do is your table's gonna have a set of tools. Okay, and you are going to use those tools to score and slip. So this is a tool used for scoring. It's a little cheat tool versus just a needle tool. And we're kind of short on needle tools. This is a needle tool. Okay, so you can either use this or this. What you're trying to do is create that kind of Velcro-like surface. And this first coil needs to go up on top. If you put it out here to the side, you're gonna have a little bit weaker piece. I used to have kids coil the bases of them and they would crack and leak every time. So I learned over the years, don't do it that way. And Maria didn't do it that way, did she? She didn't mm -hmm. coil the base. So the purpose of coiling the walls is to get any shape you want. That is good scoring. It looks like hatch and cross hatch, right? And then when I attach to it, I'm going to need another um, amount that's going to be hatched and cross hatched. Now, 
here is the most successful way. And if you fight me on this step, you will probably not feel very successful. When you roll your coils out, you need your coils to be the size of your pointer finger, okay? So when I look at like RJ, show me your pointer finger. See how big that is? His pointer finger is larger than mine. I bet RJ's stronger than me. Okay, can we see yours? Okay, so look at this little tiny pointer finger here. So her pointer finger, she's probably not gonna put as much pressure. Okay, so it needs to be relative to your strength. Okay, when we saw Maria do it, how did she roll her coils? She held them up in the air. That is a way to get them started and to re-round them but for the most part, you can roll them against the table. And it doesn't make a huge mess because this is pre-manufactured clay, okay? But sometimes when we roll, we don't realize we don't know how to roll very good. And we roll really short. And if you roll really short like that, I'm trying to make it do it, it will go flat, okay? If I roll at least about six or eight inches, I will get a more rounded coil. So see right there where it went flat? which is not a big issue. Is that approximately the size of my pointer finger? Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that I score this coil and I'm gonna use this little tool so you guys can see how much faster it goes than a needle tool. But there's gonna be kind of a combination in your box for your table to use, okay? So I'm gonna kind of set it up on here. I'm gonna wrap it. Sorry that y'all can't see that. I'll put it out here further. Okay, so you're going to wrap it, and you're going to see, okay, is that one sitting straight up on this and flush with it? Okay, so once it is, I'm going to take a needle tool, and I'm going to miter it. And miter means it's kind of like a picture frame, okay? So with a picture frame, it comes together like this, so it is flush, okay? The crown molding in your house is mitered, okay? So I gotta go opposite here. Now, this is gonna be the most weak place of your coil right here because we brought two pieces together. So you still have to score and slip this ring. And you do not want to start and stop these mitered places at the same place, okay? In my little handy dandy box that I have here, you're gonna have slip, so I'll just put it back here so I can see. Okay, so we're going to add some slip to it. I'm gonna put in your kit a little paintbrush. But the ones I'm going to give you are going to have a red handle. They're the ones that come out of like the really cheap watercolor. This is fine for now. This is like the ones that come out of the cheap watercolor because it it's sand basically and eventually it's going to ruin a good brush. So don't use a good brush. So I'm going to miter that piece together. And you can use your fingers as a tool. That's your handiest tool. But you can use some of the wooden tools. Notice. I only put the slip on one side. It's acting as glue. When you put two pieces of paper together, do you put slip on both sides of the paper? No. No. It'll get really weak if we do that, okay? So I've scored really good here. I've scored really good here. And I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna fill over my score lines with some slip. Now, when I put this one on, I'm gonna apply pressure. Okay, so remember those four stages that we had? Score, slip, press, attach. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure I'm not smashing it flat. Okay, on this very first round, I want you to smooth these two pieces together because it's hard once it gets taller. So I'm gonna take my finger and I'm just gonna pull the clay up and down. A really good tool to use also for this is a wooden knife. And there's a wooden knife in your kit of things that you can use. Popsicle stick works really great for this as well. If it gets a little bit too much slip, that's when you might wanna use a popsicle stick. So basically I'm, 
I'm welding this together, I'm gonna make sure that this is gonna be sealed. This is the most common place students make a pot and it comes apart. Okay, so where are my tools? So I'll show you a couple tools that you have that you can use. This back end part of this, you wanna make sure it's clean, otherwise it'll scratch your pot. And you can come back around and you want that seam to be completely gone. Okay, now I'm gonna go all the way around the outside when I do that, and then you can use the table kind of help you re-round that and smooth it. But we're not gonna worry about it being perfectly smooth right now because we got a lot of stages to go. I'm gonna take this or a popsicle stick and I'm gonna go inside, can y'all see that? And I'm gonna bring that clay together see that so I'm taking some of this so that really thick coil that you're like wow Miss Westrow that coil looks thick and heavy now it's starting to get thinned out a little bit isn't it mm -hmm. so I'm gonna go all the way around bring that clay down and then I'm gonna use this to smooth now I've seen students and for whatever reason, whether they just think that's the thing to do or they think a teacher showed them, I've seen students take slip and coat things to try to smooth it and you don't wanna do that. Slip is the same thing as clay and it has something in it called grog. Does anybody know what grog is? Grog? Grog, it's a weird word. Grog is really little tiny rocks of clay that's built into this. So if you were to really, you think this is creamy, but as you take it and you look and you smash it out flat, you see some little white specks in there? Mm -hmm. That is either little rocks or clay that's been fired and put in there and it adds stability to the clay and it prevents shrinkage. If you start to put moisture on the outside of this and rub it, it's gonna bring up that grog. I really do like popsicle sticks for smoothing. I'm not gonna worry about the little marks that it's making. I'm, I'm concerned only with, does that seam disappear? Have I smoothed that seam away, okay? Another thing you wanna watch out for, this is a bad habit, is students will lean it up on its side like this. This is really soft. Every time I do that, it dents the side. So I will know whenever you're doing that, okay? You're gonna flip your pot over when you get it to that state, and you're gonna write your name. My name's really long, so I'm gonna write T. Westervelt. You must have a complete first or complete last name if you're gonna do an initial. I prefer that you have first name and last name. If you want to put the year, you can put the year, okay? If that goes away as I build, I want to add it later, okay? Now, we're going to add three coils. So I'm going to score this because I know I have a coil that's coming. And a mis mistake often that students also do is you sit and you play with your clay too long and it starts to get dry and kind of crunchy, okay? So you don't want to do that either. I'm gonna take enough to build another coil because that doesn't look like it's gonna be enough. I'm gonna pull it off. I'm gonna start by rolling it between my hands, patting it so it's not flat. I'm gonna be as Maria-like as I possibly can. Guess she really knew what she was doing, didn't she? Then I'm gonna to start to roll that a good distance so it stays round. And if you know that you're gonna always roll it to the size of your finger, you've also got a good measure as to when am I finished rolling this and I don't get it too thick or too thin. And when I say the finger, I mean this part right here under your knuckle. Okay, you guys tell me, what should I do before I add this coil onto this? Score. Okay, so I scored, I do need some slip. Okay, and then what do I need to do to this coil? Score. Okay, so I'm not gonna slip this side, I'm just gonna score. So I'm gonna go two directions. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna miter one end. Okay, and I need it to be more like a 45 degree angle there. Okay, I don't know how big this is gonna be. And what, 
I want to do next, we need it to start coming out. We want that dramatic angle. If you stack one on top of another again, you're going to have a really straight, weird base, aren't you? So pretend this is my coil that I'm going to stack. I'm going to do it from here. You guys are going to stack it half on, half off. Okay? So you can actually score and slip more to the outer edge of it. And if I do that, can you see how that's starting to slope out? Can you guys see how that's starting to slope out? So three coils should really get you um, probably up to your one-third point or two-thirds of your base. Okay, so this will be two-thirds tall. As you build your neck, it'll come in one-third, won't it? So that's really, you only have to build about 10 coils total or less. Okay, so I've got my scoring done. I've mitered it a little bit. I'm going to consciously sit it before I start adding pressure to it to the outside. Okay, so you can pick it up, you can look. You can make sure it's sitting up on that edge enough. Okay, and am I starting to see a little bit of a slope? Okay, so I'm not going to smooth this one, I'm going to build another coil. Other than I am going to seal this miter joint. And I'm going to press that together. Okay, I'm going to start with some more clay. Notice how much I get. So that when you come and you get a piece of clay, you don't get more clay than you're going to actually be able to use. Think about that in coils. How long is that going to be? So I'm going to pound it together in my hands, give it a quick rounding, start to bring it out into a coil. And then I'm going to roll it. I'm going to try to do it short so it'll go flat. If you just go back and forth like this, that's where it will go flat. I can't make it do it today. There, it did it. See how when I just rolled back and forth, it got flat? So you guys want to roll it a broader distance so it'll stay round. And obviously, as you make a bigger coil and you go out more, you got to have more clay. And if it gets too thin, just don't use it. Just wad it up, try again. It's kind of thin right here and kind of thick there. If your edges are thick, it'll make it really hard to wrap. All right, so this one, I cut it off a little bit short. I'm going to score and slip back to that. So it might be good to test it before you cut it off. I cut it kind of at a miter, so it's going to be okay. Now, I want to see, I think right there is where I mitered last. I don't want to start this miter at the same point. So I'm going to make sure I go over here figure out how large it's going to need to be to go off and on. And I'm going to make sure I cut and miter to this side. Still a little bit long. So I'm cutting underneath again. I keep making adjustments until you can see that you're about half on and half off. So y'all can see what that looks like. Okay, so the setting on, setting off. I'm gonna score. So I gotta score and slip these together. And then we're gonna start the smoothing process. So we've got three coils high. Every time you build three coils, you're gonna stop and smooth. You don't need to stop and smooth every coil. But my suggestion is, if this sets up even overnight, it gets more firm. So wherever you stop at a day, it's that part needs to be smooth. 
So like today, before I would leave, I need to smooth all of that. Okay? I'm gonna add some slip. And dab it on. And I'm gonna place it there. I'm gonna put a little pressure all the way around. I don't want it to stick to the table, so I'm not putting that much pressure. And I can clearly see that it's stacked, right? Okay, always smooth the outside first. And two hands. I'm gonna put this hand inside. I'm gonna start with my finger. This is why you, if you let it sit up overnight, when you do it the next day, sometimes those coils are a little bit firm and you can't get them to smooth as easily. So I'm gonna smooth it with my finger when it gets slick like that. Okay. Now, on the inside, I'm gonna take this tool, or this is called a rib, this is called a rib, okay? I'm gonna take these little tools, and I'm gonna hold it in my hand, because this is kinda of like my little form that I want it to take on as the curve of my hand, and I'm gonna to start to smooth and turn. What did Maria use in that video? She turned it on something that she was supporting it with. It was called a oh, that broken, yeah. that broken piece of pottery, okay? Or sometimes they used gourds. I like these little rubber ribs, but if you wanna use these, these will also work. You can go straight down into the bottom. And what am I trying to seal up? What am I trying to get rid of? The ribs, the, the air the, the ridges between the, the pieces of clay, okay? You have to support your pot. If you just put your pot here and you start pushing, you will have a very wonky shaped pot at the end, okay? So, I'll try to bring some paper plates for you guys to put it on. See how I'm turning and smoothing? Okay. And it's important before you get it too tall and too tiny at the top that you get that inside and outside smooth, okay? That's pretty smooth. The last thing I would do is take a damp sponge. When I say damp, I mean treat this like sandpaper. Put water in it, completely squeeze it out. This will smooth even further that little bit of water. That's the only way I'd ever want you to add water to your piece of pottery, okay? It's really moist today. Tomorrow, the first thing I would do after I get it out of my bag would be to go back around and check the seams, make sure they're sealed. Okay, sometimes when that slip is on there, it's so gooey, you can't get it to work. So I go back and seal. How many coils am I gonna build up after this? Three. Okay, and what portion of my pot, remember those fractions, what portion of my pot is gonna go out and then what's gonna come back in? Two thirds out, one third in. Okay, two thirds out, one third in. Okay, and then you can decide if you want a smaller neck on it, an opening, depending on the function that you want your pot to have. Questions? Can you find just Okay. Can you do the opposite and do like one third out and then two thirds inward? Okay, so if you only go out one third, this would be about a third. So the rest of this would all be tapering in. So that could be a possibility because that would be like a bottle. As long as you're thinking about those proportions, just like you would um, any kind of compositional design broken into thirds. Okay? All right. Thank you.